Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high, cause we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God, save souls, slay error. Go stronger. America, wake up. <clears throat> Don't hit the snooze button. Let's remember Jesus Christ is coming back one day, and most of us are going to have an exit interview with our Lord before he comes back. So make sure that every single day you are living and pursuing a life of holiness. As Ruben Nava says, my partner on the other show, he says, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I'm reporting for duty. How about you, Terry? Jesse, I am reporting for duty. Today's show is going to be a high information show, Jesse, because... One of the things we're going to talk about is the President Trump banning federal money from funding far-left, anti-American critical race theory. It's about time that's been defunded. It's been going on for far too long. But the most important topic today, folks, that we're going to talk about is Archbishop Vigano's interview. Here's a wide-range interview with him addressing, check this out, the connections between the deep state and the deep church. And he points out that the rebellion in our society since the sexual revolution, maybe the late 60s, is linked to the rebellion of the church, which stemmed from those who, I'm going to, he said it and I said it many times, hijacked Vatican II. And much, much more. We've got a very inspirational story that Jesse's going to share right after Fulton Sheen about two policemen that were shot that we're going to pray for. Also, last night, Jess, we had a bumper crop of people for the talks on the angels. Tonight's topic is awesome. going to be, you, you, if Jesse was here, I guarantee you, the mission of St. Michael the Archangel. That's our topic today, Jess. Wow. So people come. If you're in Southern California, we have confessions at 530, mass at 630, and the talk will follow after that. Plenty of room, folks. We'll put you up on the roof if I have to. But Jess, uh, the most important thing we do on this show is not the articles that we talk about It's the good news of Jesus Christ. We call it the good news. Jesse calls it soul food. So it's the gospel of the Mass that we have each day. So, Jess, can you read today's gospel, brother? Yep, there you go. The word gospel means good news, by the way, in case you're wondering. You always hear it all the time. What does it mean? It means good news. Today's good news is talking about Stabat Mater. What does Stabat Mater mean? It means the mother at the foot of the cross. It's, and in fact, there's an old beautiful prayer called Stabat Mater, which uh, you should try to pray this month because this is the month of Our Lady of Sorrows, uh, who received, uh, that, that means the mother was standing, Stabat Mater. Okay, Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Jesus' father, and notice it didn't say his foster father, because again, uh, as uh, as we know even if a person is adopted or a foster father based on 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 the fourth commandment honor thy father and thy mother they take on the role as the actual father of the person so the bible never calls joseph the foster father you notice that always calls him the father okay and it says here jesus father and mother were amazed at what was said about him And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword, will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed, the gospel of the Lord. It was at this moment, yeah, it was at this moment that the Blessed Virgin Mary Mm -hmm. really assumed the title of Our Lady of Sorrows. And as Our Lady of Sorrows, she received, exorcists will tell you that all the graces given by God the Trinity at that moment were given to Our Lady in a very special way because she's the mother that stood at the foot of the cross. And uh, Our Lady of Sorrows actually plays a very special role in spiritual warfare. Exorcists will tell you that if you have a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, she will actually reveal to you 
the generational spirit that attacks your family because each family has a, has a, unfortunately, there's a demon assigned to attack each family. And if you have a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, she will reveal the generational spirit in your family, whether it's alcoholism or Freemasonry or it's uh, heroin, whatever it is. And this way you can start praying against it and start uh, entering into a life of virtue to offset that vice. And we also know that uh, a nine-day novena to Our Lady of Sorrows, which is a, this is the month if you're going to be doing novenas, this is the, the month to do it for Our Lady of Sorrows. When you do a nine-day novena to Our Lady of Sorrows, she'll give you a grace, a special grace, and reveal to you, again, what is the generational sin in your children as well. That way you can pray for the healing and the sanctification and the holiness of your children. Because uh, one, of the, one of the things that also most people don't realize that pains the devil is that the devil was made, Lucifer was made to, to love and serve Our Lady. And so the pain of Lucifer right now, because that's his natural inclination, it was to love and serve Our Lady, but now as the devil, this is what caused him a lot of torment, especially the fact that she's received all these graces at the foot of the cross, as the mother stood by the foot of the cross, consenting to the sacrifice of her son Jesus Christ and offering him back to God the Father. This is why all grace, as St. Louis de Montfort says, now flows through Mary, mediatrix of all graces, she received all those graces at the foot of the cross being Stabat Mater. Terry? Jesse, because we've got so many new listeners coming on board and we are called Virgin Most Powerful Radio, can you share with our listeners why we ended up calling this network Virgin Most Powerful? And why is that title a very powerful title when it comes to spiritual warfare? That's Our Lady of Sorrows mm-hmm. and Virgo Potens, Virgin Most Powerful are the two titles that exorcists will tell you are the most effective in driving out demons. And so Terry and myself, we realized that uh, all of us are under diabolical attack. That's right. And so when we were thinking about what do we call this station in a special way so we can have this protection from the diabolical, I I basically uh, just proposed the name Virgin Most Powerful because, again, that's the name that's the preferred uh, that's the preferred title to drive out demons during an exorcism. Uh, Virgin Most Powerful and Our Lady of Sorrows. So uh, I think everybody else here, all the brothers and sisters here on, on staff, they all said, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. But that's why, that's why we chose Virgin Most Powerful specifically, because that's a title that protects us against the devil. And that's a title that the devil fears specifically. Terry? That's powerful. Thanks for sharing that, Jesse. Now let's bring this. Oh, before we bring this. All right, we'll, we'll do Sheen, and then I want to pray yeah, for those sure. two officers. Okay, Absolutely. Fulton Sheen, full Sheen ahead. You heard the locomotive train. This sets the stage again for our culture. Bishop Sheen says, if you don't worship God, you'll worship something. Nine out of ten times, it'll be yourself. So true. He says, you have a duty to worship God, not because he will be imperfect and unhappy if you do not. And here it comes, but because you will be imperfect and unhappy if you don't worship God. See, we have a culture right now just worshiping man. But let's let's pray for those two soldiers, so two policemen in Compton that were shot. Give us a story because many people haven't even heard this, Jess. Give us what happened. Yeah, Terry, there's a, a, a female L.A. deputy sheriff, 30 years old, uh, married, has a 6-year-old son. Yep. And a 24-year-old uh, male L.A. deputy sheriff. They were Compton patrol station, mm-hmm. and uh, they were in their car probably writing reports and stuff, catching up on their paperwork. And what ended up happening is you had a a black suspect, we know that at this point, that just basically ambushed them, walked up to the car. Execution style. And tried, yeah, tried to execute both of them. That's exactly what he tried to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was other young black guys around there that were recording it. So it's like if people knew that this was going to go down, there's a lot of young blacks that were there recording it on their cell phones. And laughing and making jest of it, and I mean, just uh, they posted this on YouTube. They, I, I, it was despicable to watch these videos that emerged from uh, this ambush, where you have these uh, young black guys laughing and mocking these wounded deputies that were shot in the head, both of them, and they're struggling to stay alive. But let me tell you, Terry, you, you talk about God being all over this and stuff, even in a bad situation. Yep. Especially the female. Talk about a Saint Joan of Arc. She gets shot. Through the jaw, Terry. Oh, no. Through the mouth. Yeah. Her partner, he gets shot several times as well. 
uh, a, a lot of shots through his arms. Yep. Uh, and and uh, sh- the female, s- instead of falling on the ground, the, the guy fell. I mean, he was he, they rolled out of the car and he fell. The female, Terry, stood up, radioed for help with a broken jaw. You can hear it on the internet. It, it sounds like she's drunk. I mean, obviously, her jaw's broken, and she's putting out a call. It's called the 998. Officer's been shot. Uh, you know, assistance call. Uh, officer involved shooting. We've, we've been shot. That's a 998. That's, and uh, you, can, you can barely make it out, and you can tell that, like, she, it sounds like she's got rocks in his mouth. Her mouth is full of blood, and her jaw is basically hanging you know, it's just hanging open because she can't close it. Right. And, and at the same time, not only is she standing up, I mean, most people would have been on their back screaming and in pain and writhing in pain. She has the presence of mind not only to put out a crime broadcast in their location, she starts uh, placing a tourniquet, applying a tourniquet on the male deputy's wounds. He's on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Terry. That's heroic. Th- you talk about, yeah. You talk about heroic virtue. I yeah. mean, this is something that um, this is something that and these, this is like biblical stuff. These this is stuff you read about in the Bible. Yeah, and it goes to show you, uh, what grace can do. Uh, without a doubt, they they probably have some praying family members. I don't know anything about them. If they're praying people, we know that the suspect was a black man between twenty eight and thirty. He ran away in a black four door sedan, sped away from the ambush. And one of our friends, Terry... Um, yeah, Jesse, Fred hang on Krause. a second. I'm going to tell you about Fred. That's a teaser right now for the break. Okay. Folks, Fred Krause has been on our radio network over the a years. A bunch of times. He's a chaplain for the Sheriff's Department. He's going to... Jesse for gonna, Compton Station. For, for Com- that station. For that station. And we're going to talk when we come back about finishing up that story. We're, and then we're going to pray for those two soldiers. Two, two, uh, Policemen? Why? No, they really are soldiers, Terry. Yeah, I really know. I keep soldiers. calling them soldiers. I keep. They are. Yeah, they are. What they did. We're going to talk more about that here on the Terry and Jesse Show. What are we doing? Helping you fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church. We'll be back with much more on the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eye to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the imminent threats on the internet. www.CovenantEyes.com Code VMPR Live Porn Free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. 
Now, here's Terry and Jesse. We're talking about the two Los Angeles deputy sheriffs out of Compton Station that were ambushed, and they were shot by a black suspect who yep. at this point is still at large. One female deputy, 30 years old, with a six-year-old son, was shot through the jaw. She still had the presence of mind to radio for help and apply a tourniquet to the 24-year-old male deputy's wounds. He was on his knees. Uh, uh, again, it's, it, this is nothing short of heroic in her part. Amen. Her partner suffered gunshots wood the, the, the male deputy suffered gunshots wood to his forehead, to his arms and his hand. And uh I guess it it was probably the forehead one that dropped him obviously oh, yeah. on his knees. Oh yeah. But uh if it wasn't for the quick thinking or the heroic thinking of this female deputy, they pro- both probably would have been de- dead. Terry, but this is Black Lives Matter, Terry, has called for the execution of policemen yep. ambushing and shooting them. So they're 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 just carrying out what they've already set out to do, and so uh, th- this is uh, th- this is basically uh, BLM's. This is BLM's uh, marching orders. They want this defunding the police also means executing the police. And again, what's sick is these some of these young black guys that were there that were taking selfies, mocking the wounded cops as they're struggling for their life. But thanks be to God, we have people like Fred Cross. Who uh, he's a chaplain, a friend of the show. He's a former pastor from Calvary Chapel, and he's a, no, a solid Catholic Christian. He uh, he's he's the chaplain of uh, Compton Station. He what he does, he evangelizes, he gives spiritual direction uh, to the young cops out there, and he rides with them also. And he's also kind of there like a mentor to a lot of the, the officers. And you can you can't get a better guy than this. This guy's built like the Hulk, so he, he everybody everybody respects him in the sheriff's department because they all know who he is. But he's deeply in love with Jesus Christ. And Terry, uh, he ended up picking up, Fred Cross ended up picking up a, uh, a priest and took the priest to the hospital. And the hospital gave both these deputies the anointing of the sick and the apostolic pardon. But it looks like, again, the anointing of the sick, the, pr- the promise of the anointing of the sick in J- James chapter 5 is that God will bring some people to physical health. And it looks like the anointing of the sick is res- the graces are restoring both these young rookie cops uh, back to uh, back to healing and hopefully to normal one day. Before we go back on talking about the Trump banning federal money from funding far left anti American crit- uh, critical race theory, uh, we are having a conference as you as I mentioned at the beginning of the show with the work of the Holy Angels. And there's a young lady here with me who we helped raise some money so she could join the convent. This was maybe uh, well, I don't know eight weeks ago, ten weeks ago. And she's here. She's planning to join the convent. And people, uh, I just want to thank our our listeners because I think people donated sixty some hundred dollars to help pay her debt off. Because you can't go into the convent without paying your debt off. So, Aaron, are you with us right now? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, Aaron. Why well, I want you to give our listeners first of all. I know you want to thank the listeners, but also give us an update on your vocation situation right now. Yes, yeah, I really wanted to thank everyone. I was really blown away at the generosity of people and just their absolute support for my vocation. Um, so I am fundraising still until December 31st. I have another goal of $60,000 to fundraise by then. And God willing, I'll be able to enter with the Sisters of the Holy Cross in January. But this time, um, still being in the world, working in the emergency room during all that's going on has been a real blessing for me as well and has really helped me to grow spiritually. And I've met so many amazing people on this journey and through the Terry and Jesse show that I just really <laughs> want to thank you, Terry. It's Our been pleasure. a beautiful journey. How can people still help? What, what website can they go to? Yeah, so the website is um, rescuevocations.org slash Aaron, E-R-I-N. Got it. And then uh, I know you have a young lady next to you, Brenda. You're here for the conference. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My mic is not on. I can hear you fine, Brenda. Okay. Can you? Can I tell them about what? I just tell them about why you're here for the conference. That's all. I'm here for the retreat with yeah. Opus Sanctorum Angelorum by the grace of God mm-hmm. and through the help of my holy guardian angel. Yeah. I get to meet all you wonderful people and I get to enjoy this time of prayer. Good. And... Uh, get to enjoy the show as well and i praise god for that well good well i'm glad you're here and if anybody wants to come to the conference tonight it starts at 5:30 for confessions it'll be a great time i want to thank both of you young ladies 
for um, doing what you're doing. And, and because guess what? Guys like Jesse and I, we're getting old. We need a next generation. And I can see both That's of you right. as young girls and who love Jesus and Mary, and you have great devotion to your guardian angel. So thanks so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Terry and Jesse. God Alrighty. bless you. God bless oh, you too. Bless Bye-bye you. now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Restores my faith. Well, Restores Jesse, my faith. when I see these yeah. young girls, I always yeah. get motivated because, I mean, Jess, we're getting old, brother. This is the R- next. Rounding third base. <laughs> Ronnie, third base. Yeah. Jess, let's get into this uh, President Trump banning federal money. What's he doing, Jess? It's about time. Terry, uh, in, in our colleges and universities, political correctness has come in oh, man, has uh, through, through, through this subject or this discipline taught yeah. in, co- in, in schools of higher learning. Uh-huh. It's called critical race theory. Yes. And all it does, Terry, it's basically a far left anti-American ideology that promotes racial division. Mm -hmm. And this is being taught in federal agencies and being paid for federal money. So the the director of the Office of Management and Budget that works for President Donald Trump, his name's Russell Vought, Mm -hmm. he called critical race theory divisive. Yep. Anti-American propaganda and far-left ideology that falsely promotes the notion that there is racism embedded in the belief that America is the land of opportunity or the belief that the most qualified person should receive the, a job. In other words, that's racist to believe that the most qualified... They, they basically believe in affirmative, that's affirmative action. That's what I was action. just going to say, affirmative action. They don't care about your quali- qualifications. They just care about your skin color. And that is, that's, that's, it's, <laughs> you know what? The, but Terry, that, goes against no what, that goes against what Dr. Uh, Reverend Martin Luther exactly. King said. Exactly. He is a black man. He says people should not be judged by the uh, by the content by the color of their skin, right. but by the content of their character. This this entire critical race theory yeah. goes against what Reverend Martin Luther King spoke about, Terry. And you know, Jesse, we when we grew up, our parents would say actions have consequences. Okay, so J- Jesse, you need to work hard in school. You need to uh, do certain things to get ahead in life. And if you don't do it, you're going to pay a price for your lack of, of work ethic. And I think Absolutely. that's affected our culture where people say, wait a minute, I want that job because I'm white or I'm black or I'm this or I'm that. Yeah. that whatever happened to merit base? And you know what, Jess? I think it led into the Little League when we were kids. Guess what, Jess? You know, the guys that got the trophy, they weren't, it wasn't everybody. You won the pennant. You were an all star, you got a trophy. This idea that everybody gets trophies, I think it blends into that, and it, well, it's ruining the ethic of work. Now, that's my take. Am I onto something? That's uh, Terry. That's why I've always kind of liked individual sports myself. That's why <laughs> I did other sports, but I really gravitated towards boxing and and, and kickboxing, full contact karate. Because if I lost, it was all me. If I won, it was all me. <laughs> and uh, so it, it really, it, it uh, to me personally, yeah, uh, individual it. sports. It it basically taught me a merit-based system but and by the way heaven is merit-based of course you're you're not gonna nobody's gonna get to heaven because you're gonna say oh i was part of the romero family nope, i was part work. of the barber nope. family no you're gonna have to individually barber or romero family or merit-based family, individually merit your salvation exactly. based obviously on the grace of god yeah. but boy oh boy uh, your good works or lack thereof can disqualify you from entering heaven. And that's going to be on an individual basis. That's why at the particular judgment, we are judged individually. And according to all the saints, our entire life is shown to us like in one big video, one big screen. And we watch everything, Terry. Uh, uh, again, heaven is merit-based. Uh, but going back to this article, Terry, yep. these, this training has been happening in federal government to the employees of you know of all races and ethnicities and religions they've been forcing this stuff upon all these employees Quite a few years this type of training which really it undercuts our core value uh, uh, this uh, race theory uh, yeah critical race theory yeah. i would call this political correctness and fake systemic racism racism training yeah to beat down white people and believing that they have white privilege. Yeah. That's what it is, Terry. It really is. And Jesse, I want to tie it into the mentality of universal salvation, too. You see, we can't. We have this mentality that everybody goes to heaven. Now, you say, wait a minute, you're talking about affirmative action. No, I'm saying the mentality is there that, it, that your actions have no consequences. And Jess, I, the example I give someone who says, I don't believe in gravity, 
Try dropping off a, a, a roof at, at a sixth floor, on the sixth floor, and at the end, you're going to believe in gravity, brother. And you see, this is why at a charity, not because I'm boasting. No, it's charity to give people the message of salvation and not to lie about something about, uh, you know, affirmative contrary to the gospel and just say, oh, it's okay. You, know, you can get to heaven just that way. No, that's a lie. You need to tell people the truth and charity. That's my take on that. I'll tell you, Terry, let's just be honest. Yeah. Our country, people that criticize our country, yeah. of course our country's made mistakes in the past. Oh, yeah, they're not perfect. But, he, but here's what's beautiful about our country, unlike other countries that still practice slavery. Yep. America has the ability to correct herself. Why? Because of the natural law that's enshrined in the Constitution and in the Declaration of Independence. And so, it, yeah, the, flaw, the flaws that have happened in America... It's because we didn't follow our Constitution and didn't follow right. the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and uh, But when we do follow it, it makes this country great. It makes this country, Terry, the, the reason why everybody around the world yep. wants to jump the fence and go on a boat and hide in cargo because to come to this country. Because, right? Yes, because this country no. has the ability to correct <laughs> herself because of natural law yeah. enshrined in the documents and once we follow those documents, by the way, which we're trying to, the Democrats don't seem to understand uh, the Declaration of Independence that we're afforded life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So they're still a little behind the eight ball, Terry. Hey, Jesse, the days of taxpayer-funded indoctrination training, okay, it's over. And I'm so happy with this president to do that because people are going to be based on merit. And I think that, you know, Jesse, do you remember getting your first paycheck? I sure do. How did you feel when you earned that check, Jess? Come on. I said, I did this without my mom and dad. <laughs> I did this on my own. It's true. And it was, talk about, <laughs> talk about uh, feeling yeah. this sense of dignity. Yeah, like, that's man, where I'm, I'm going. Wow, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm producing. I'm giving back. Yep. Uh, I'm an essential part of society. Exactly. I can do something. Yeah. Uh, versus Terry, the, the the whole thing about race, you know, critical race theory, they uh, it, it, it goes against everything exactly. that we've been taught as Catholics in terms of personal responsibility. Yep. What we you know we, we would call self reliance. Uh, you know, hard work is the key to Be success. Or how about yeah, work before play. The liberals exactly. want play before work. Yeah. You know, th this entire ethic of working and making money. It also teaches you respect for authority. That's right. It teaches you that competition is good because somebody can beat you and, and take your job That's if right. you're not putting out every single day as best as you can. Well, it also teaches you progress in a good sense. Here's my line. Competition stimulates an industry. Yeah. And it also stimulates us to do better. But without competition, you're weak. Okay. That's bottom line. Hey, when we come back, yep. we're going to inspire you with Archbishop Vigano's latest interview here on the Terry and Jesse show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. We got Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest. I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, time, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, you that's know, right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this. I just want to call all the people, you know, I got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, brother. You're amazing. We gotta, we have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 30 years old 29 years old five kids and i thank you guys but everybody else man get on fire fight for the truth man i know what i'm telling you guys there's i no love it out there if you shop on amazon.com there's an easy way to support virgin most powerful radio just visit smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center under the desired charity. 
Now, when you log into your Amazon account and purchase products, a portion of it will automatically go to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio at no cost to you. Thanks in advance for supporting CRC and VMPR, and may God richly bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Lord Jesus Christ, may your precious blood bring healing to Amen. those two Los Angeles deputy sheriffs Amen. that are fighting for their life. And Lord, we just ask you through the graces that they receive from the sacrament of the anointing of the sick at the hands of a priest, that they may come to full healing and rehabilitation in Jesus' name through Mary's intercession. Our Lady of Sorrows, pray, pray for them. Pray for us. Name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Terry. Jesse, so we mo- let's talk about Archbishop Vigano. Just for those who don't know who he is, Jess, let's set the stage about you know him being an apostolic nuncio to the United States. Um, he's the one who really opened up the a can of worms and exposing this, this, the problems in the Catholic Church in America with Cardinal, former Cardinal McCarrick. And without Archbishop Vigano, Jesse, things would be a lot different because the corruption is not wouldn't be uh, exposed without him. Would you? Do you think that's a fair statement? Absolutely. And uh, this is the John the Baptist of the Catholic Church right now. Yep. We have several John the Baptists, but this is the one that, without a doubt, is the one that's uh, that's most outspoken, and he's and and he's given clear insight into the problems of the church. One of the things that he's talked about right now, yeah, and we'll jump around into several parts of the article because it's, it's, it's all it's all meaty. Oh yeah, I've known about this. In fact, I even wrote about I wrote a long section on this on my book, "Knocked Off the Donkey." But Archbishop Vigano talks about the agreement between Catholic University presidents, led by Jesuit Father Vincent O'Keefe and Father Theodore Hesburgh, yep. to to modernist, which declared independence and abandoned all authority from the magisterium of the Catholic Church. And this was an agreement also signed by disgraced former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. That's right. 1967. It was called the Land O Lakes Declaration. Look, how many people have even heard about this, Jess? But, you know, I, this is what the split the church in it, half. It there. really did, Jesse. Let's get into that whole issue. Uh, during that meeting, they signed a document known as the, as Jess said, the Land O Lakes Statement, which declared, Jess said, the independence of their Catholic universities and colleges from all authority and all bonds of fidelity to the magisterium of the church. This document, which I vigorously denounced, Archbishop Vigano said in my report to Pope Francis, uh, is devastating and has the consequences of the church and civil society in the United States. Let me just say one thing and you continue, Jess, and that is, People come up all the time and say, what happened to the Catholic colleges, man? I mean, I, I when I went to a Jesuit school, the guy says, it was great. And then I sent my kids and they lost their faith. Well, that's the culprit right there, Jess. Continue. Yeah. What it was is like, it was just the infiltration of Marxism into Catholic University. Yep. And, and Marxism is basically communist thought, communist socialist thought. And uh, they came up with this kind of new Catholicism back in the 60s. It was called social justice. Social justice Catholicism, social justice Catholics, yep. where they, for, they they basically put aside the salvation of the human soul, and they're more concerned now with the salvation of the body, the salvation of yep. Earth, the salvation of the environment, and uh, and and this is what's basically this Lando Lake statement. It's replaced authentic evangelization, and I'm glad that Archbishop Vigano is talking about it. He's not the only one, but he's definitely one of the clear voices right now in the church today. Uh, again, Theodore McCarrick, he was one of the the, uh, the the prelates that signed this document that rebelled against the church's teaching. Yep. Here's another area that Archbishop Vigano talks about. He says, 
I wish to what I wish to emphasize is the close connection between the rebellion of the ultra progressive clergy with the Jesuits in the lead. That's Talk right. about courage for saying that. Yep. We all know that, but he's saying stuff like, "Don't say that. Don't say that. You're going to get your head cut off." He's saying it. Yep. The Jesuits have been the problem in modern times. They, these are not the same Jesuits of Charles Borromeo and Ignatius of Loyola and St. Francis nope. of Xavier. We're talking about a complete infiltration virtually. There's a few good ones left, and those are the ones that basically uh, they, try, they try to cancel them, as, you, as they say. They have no voice in the Jesuits. You're not going to hear Father, uh, Fessio. Father Fessio or Father Pacwa being interviewed by America Magazine. No way. No way. Okay? That, that, that's the point that I'm making. They're, they've been canceled out. From their own order. In other words, you got no voice. Go out in there, you know, do your little little ministries on the side. You have no voice with us. And, and, and Jesse, let me just throw this in, because what he basically is saying is that a lot of these Jesuits, a lot of these liberals, it's, we call it modernism. What they yeah. did is they said, Jesus Christ's teachings and the gospel, they're not good enough, Jess. They're not good enough. We're going to replace them with what man is thinking about. And it doesn't matter about salvation. It's more like, are we helping people? Are we have social justice issues? So in short, the responsibility from what Archbishop Vigano said is the betrayal of the self-styled Catholic politicians rests entirely on the unfaithful clergy, the secular, Bingo. yeah, he nailed it, regular enslaved to modernist ideology and of the hierarchy. He's saying some stuff that I knew, I just haven't said, but man, he's saying I'm agreeing. Hierarchy, which neither knew or or nor wanted to intervene with the necessary firmness to prevent this incalculable damage to the entire body of the church. In this sense, Jess, the deep state and the deep church have clearly acted in concert in the aim of scientifically disabilizing, Stabilizing. destabilizing, thank you, both the civil and ecclesiastical order. He said, today we have an opportunity because of the smuck, we have an opportunity to understand the current situation, and it is once again, he's nailing it, the task of the authorities to do everything possible to stop this race to abyss. The Holy See and the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, he says, have a duty, amen, to call to obedience both the rebel, rebel, rebel clerics and the laity whom they continue to deceive and even publicly support. And I'll give examples of that. Go ahead, Jess. He just gave us the, the, the nexus of the problem. That's it. You have the deep state yep. in the Catholic Church and the deep, uh, in the deep state in, in, in government and the deep state in the Catholic Church, and they're both working together for the same thing, for what Pope Paul VI actually yep. called, uh, the, the term he called uh, right after the council, a couple, about 10 years after the council, he said, that the church is going through an auto demolition. That's exactly of what he said. I agree. An auto yep. demolition. Pope Paul the Six. Saint who, Pope Paul the Six. Yeah, yeah. Who said <laughs> that we are the church is eating itself? Yep. That's what that's what auto demolition means. Yes. The church is destroying itself. This is what Vigano is saying, but yep. Vigano actually tells you who are the players the yeah. deep state it's coming out in, in the paul in, in, in the political order the civil order yeah. and the deep state and the church they're both buddies yeah here's another thing that he says lots of things he says when the congregation for the doctrine of the faith issued a very clear instruction on this the exclusion from holy communion of catholic politicians yep who do not follow the church's teaching it was mccarrick himself together with archbishop wilton gregory then president of the usccb implementation in the United States. Moral corruption and doctrinal deviation are intrinsically linked and yep. and to in effect ineffectively heal these wounds in the body of the church, it is imperative to act on both fronts. If this dutiful intervention does not take place, the bishops and the leaders of the church will answer to God for betraying their duty as pastor. Now, Jesse, that's charity. What he just said to those men. He's concerned about their salvation. No, really, and the salvation of souls in the church. And you know what, Jesse? I'm going to be honest with you. Over the last 10 years or many years we've been, however many years we've been on the radio, do you realize what he's been saying? We've brought almost every one of those things up in our radio show. And you know what a lot of people have told us, Jesse? You know it. Romero, Barber, you guys are nuts. Now we've got Archbishop Vigno saying all the things that, I mean it, Jess, we, every single one of those things we've covered on our radio shows. And, and then you wonder why we years. had to start we... our own network? It's a reason, Jess. Keep going, brother. That's right. Terry, here's one more thing. Let me just throw out at you. It, and it, again, it's just 
And part of the auto demolition of the church is again, there's even mechanisms within the church. Yep. Uh, I I think they're meant to shut people up. Yeah. In other words, here here's something I can't I can't I can't put my finger on. L- let's take an example. This Blessed Mary of Agreda. Her body's been incorrupt for 350 years. Right. She's had the stigmata. Why is she still blessed? I'm just I'm just asking. Mm-hmm. After three, I mean, if my body 350 years, your body's incorrupt with stig, uh, the stigmata, and they still haven't canonized her a saint. Okay. Now here's what in three from the Council of Trent, Terry, until Vatican II, mm-hmm. two popes were canonized saints. Okay, these are this is just facts. Two yeah. posts. From the end of the council to today, which is like sixty years, we've had three popes that have been canonized saints. So let me ask you a question. Ask it. In three hundred and fifty years, only two popes were canonized saints. In three hundred and fifty, and in sixty years, we've had three. And Pope Francis actually said he said, uh, you know, Pope Benedict will be canonized, and so will I. So if that's true, that'll be five. That'll be five in like seventy years. Yeah, I'm just saying, Terry. Yeah. Um, it makes you the, think. Uh, yeah. It. it uh, you at least have to scratch your head. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back onto the article here. I don't want to give myself too much of a charty. No, no. He quotes this Argentine theologian, Father Alvaro Calderon. He says this. Uh, Archbishop Vigano quotes him. He says this. If there's anything that immediately stands out to those who study the Second Vatican Council. It's the change, yep. in a liberal sense, of the concept of authority. Right. He says the Pope stripped himself of his supreme authority in favor of the bishops' collegiality. The bishops stripped themselves of their authority in favor of theologians. Theologians gave up their science in favor of listening to the faithful. And the voice of the faithful is nothing more than the fruit of propaganda, which basically comes from Marxism. Yep. I think that's a powerful line. That is there, a line, very. And you know, Jesse, Monsignor George Kelly wrote a book in 1979. You read it, The Battle for the American Church. He says, where is the church going where its leaders take them? That's why we need to be praying for our leaders. Remember what Our Lady said? Souls are going to hell because no one's there to pray and make sacrifices. Every single day, now we're, I mean, McCarrick, I'm praying that his soul will get, he will repent of all the things he does. I'm, re, I'm, I'm praying for all the, the leaders in the church who have compromised because their souls are on the line, dude. And so we need to be praying for our leaders because this ain't going to get turned around by Jess Romero or Terry Barber talking about this thing. Where it's going to get turned around is through prayer. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about Archbishop Vigano's letter that's so profound for us as Catholics in America because he's actually he's opening up the wound, Jesse, in these last couple of years. But how do you get better if you don't open up the wound? You got to cure it, right? You got to have a problem. His solution, I think, is very clear, and I happen to agree with him. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it. baby move in your tummy? How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the keyword pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Life is short, death is for sure, sin is the problem, and Jesus is the only cure. We're listening, to, we're reading, of, uh, sharing a document from Archbishop Vigano. He was uh, interviewed and especially towards the end of the document, this is the meat of it, since this is the last segment. I want to go through the meat of it. He says, as long as church leaders persist in not being able and in, in not being the first to behave consistently with their own role and with Christ's teachings, it will be impossible to demand equal consistency for, from the lady who looked to them as an example. What a powerful statement yep, that was. That is. <laughs> in, other, in other words, uh, you want to want you want to know why there's so much unclean sexual practices amongst lay people, because there's so much unclean sexual practices amongst the clergy. That's what he just said right now. That's right. That's this right. is confirmed by the fact that there are self-styled Catholic politicians who today enjoy the support of self-styled Catholic clerics and bishops. It's also confirmed by the fact that those who defend life and the natural law, although they aren't Catholic, are accused of populism compared to the dictators of the last century. And told they are not Christian. Or as in a recent case of Father James Altman, another John the Baptist, accused by his bishop of being divisive and causing scandals. In the globalist society, he writes, Planned Parenthood mirrors and plays the opposite role of that played by charitable institutions Mm -hmm. and foundations that protect life in Christian nations. In Christian societies, children were welcomed with love. And even in situations of poverty and difficulty, they were cared for, raised, and educated to become good Christians and honest citizens by putting the word of the gospel into practice. But in our anti-Christian societies, Planned Parenthood is tasked with killing these innocents, putting into practice a culture of death inspired by the one who was a murderer from the very beginning, Satan. And let's not forget that Planned Parenthood together with the other multinational abortion companies serve the Malthusian delirium of the globalist high command, which is planning a drastic decimation of the world population. Terry, this is probably one of his most powerful statements. It he is. talks about is. the anti-gospel of the synagogue of Satan yes. is spreading because of the preaching of the children of darkness. He nailed it. Hey, hey, Jess, let me jump in and just say, to back up what he's saying, in America, this is four years ago, <clears throat> we have over 110 million people walking around with sexually transmitted diseases. America spends $16 billion a year to care for these folks. And Archbishop Bigano is saying, look, <clears throat> we, we are, we've, we've built that because we didn't speak out. What he really says, Jesse, uh, and this is what I think we've lost the faith. Uh, we've lost the le- in our leadership. Many of these bishops, I know I'm judging them, but based on what they're doing, it's Archbishop Vigano is saying they, they consider Christ's teachings to be inadequate or clumsy and try to adapt what is to the secular mentality. Mm-hmm. They're afraid of appearing outdated, not in step with the times, even centuries late. As a as as many of these leaders in our church are doing right now, and I feel bad because 
This is what modernism is, Jess, and they need to go back to what Jesus Christ taught and not compromise with the world. And as a layman, this is what Fulton Sheen even said. The lay people need to speak out and say, bishops, act like bishops, priests, act like priests, please, we're praying for you. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah. Archbishop Vigano, he says that what's left is yep. always a division mm-hmm. into two camps. All right. On one you. side, the good. Yep. And on the other, the wicked. That's, tr- that's it. In the, bibli- in, in the biblical war between good and evil. Yep. And if at one time our saints destroyed idols and pagan temples, leaving no room for devil worshipers, today it is inevitable that followers of groupthink will unite to destroy and desecrate churches tear down crosses and statues of saints, and erase all memory of faith in Christ. That's what's happening right now. That's it. He He nailed it. Days gone by, forbidden books were censored in order to protect the simple ones whose souls would be poisoned by them. Today, what is good is censored because evil does not tolerate it. And then, Terry... He goes specifically into the uh, into the elections. This is this oh yeah. Let's let's here. get into that because he makes some strong yeah. statements on that. He says, "Allow me to recall the words of President Trump mm-hmm. at the end of the recent Republican National Convention." Right. Quote: Our opponents say that redemption for you can only come from giving power to them. Mm. This redemption that uh, that was President Trump. Now right. Archbigano picks Archbigano comments. He says. Yes. This redemption consists in denying God's sovereign rights over individuals, societies, nations, and replacing the gentle yoke of Christ with the odious tyranny of Satan. And it is, to all intents and purposes, a reversal of the redemption, the redemption of the slave, which the Savior accomplished on the wood of the cross. So let us not be fooled by the mellifluous words of those who usurp (laughs) the biblical metaphor of the children of light and the children of darkness to establish the kingdom of Lucifer. The darkness and chaos we see in American cities are the fruit of the same ideology that approves of postnatal abortion That's right. and homosexual marriage. Amen. That's a powerful statement. That is, man, but he's telling the truth. Just as the backers of the BLM and Antifa movements are precisely Democrats and and the philanthropic foundations that furiously oppose Trump's re-election. Terry, take the next paragraph. Well, Jesse, before I do that, I just want to say again, he's saying things that you have been saying for a long I've time. I wrote two books on it. I know, Jesse. That's why I'm laughing. When I, why I wanted this article today. And I'll take the, I'll take the hit on this. I, I told Jess, I said, Jess, I'm going to send you this link to this article. But, you know, this is everything we've been saying for years. And, Jesse, I just want to mention this. And then we'll, we'll get to that. I say it all the time. He's, he's putting up good and evil. That's how simple it is, Jess. It's not complicated. And in hell, they sing a song. Bishop Sheen said it. They sing a song. He says, I did it my way. And they sing a song in heaven. I did it his way. Vigano is really just preaching the clear teachings of the, of the gospel that says that if you, uh, you, you serve God, heaven is your reward. If you serve man and you serve yourself, Hell is where you're going. And I think right. that it's nice to hear that. Go ahead. Continue, Jess. He says this. Archbishop Vigano yeah. writes this. Biden's mention, indeed, his ignominious no. usurpation of John Paul II's famous exhortation. He just did that this week, yeah. Do not be afraid. Mm-hmm. Sounds like the serpent's cunning trick to take the fruit of the tree rather than the courageous invitation that the Polish Pope launched to a world far from Christ. And it is strange that the indignation of Archbishop Wilton Gregory, who was so ready to censure the presidential couple's visit to the shrine of St. John Paul II, today doesn't also blast his opponent, Joe Biden, a perverted Catholic who's using the image of the same Pope and of Bergoglio to advance his electoral campaign. Today, John Paul II strong and authoritative words would make the Democrats and perhaps the bishops themselves tremble. What are these words? He writes, do not be afraid to welcome Christ and accept his power. Exactly. Help the Pope and all those who wish to serve Christ and with Christ's power to serve the human person and the whole of mankind. 
Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors for Christ to a saving power. Open the boundaries of states, economic and political systems, the vast fields of culture, civilization, and development. Do not be afraid. Christ knows what is in man. He alone knows it. Today, Christ's saving power is replaced by the voice of creation, which admonishes us to return to our rightful place in the created natural order. The redeeming passion of our Lord is replaced by the groan of creation and the scourges of divine justice by the wrath of Mother Earth, of the Pachamama. Wow, he's straightforward, Jesse. Wow, we're not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. And this man is not afraid to speak his mind. Now, President Trump stated, our opponents say that the redemption for you can only come from giving power to them. But in this country, we don't don't turn to career politicians for salvation. I love that line, Jesse. Career <laughs> politicians for salvation? In America, we don't turn government to restore our souls. We put our faith in Almighty God. I love it. I believe that this faith in God, which clearly must be matched by the consistency of the Christian life and the witness, will also confirm in the 2020 U.S. presidential election, the Lord's right hand has done mighty things. He's quoting Psalm 117. Jesse, this man, I hope, is prophetic because I love everything he's saying. I think, Terry, if there is a prophet upon the earth right now, here's my take. This is my personal opinion. Go ahead. I believe it may be Archbishop Vigano. I'll uh-huh. tell you why. I'll tell you why he fits John the, the Baptist, prophet. That's for sure. Well, when yeah, when you look at the ministry of the prophets, yeah. like John the Baptist... Sure. Elijah, Ezekiel, yeah. Daniel, what what happened to them? One of the things that they were in exile. Yep. They were they were basically uh hiding from the establishment because the establishment was trying to kill them because they spoke truth to power. We have the same thing happening with Archbishop Vigano Terry. He's basically in high, he's a successor of the apostles, yep. like Daniel, like Ezekiel, like Jeremiah, like right. John the Baptist. Right. He's in hiding from the establishment because he's saying things that all of us know are true, but none of us have dared to speak out in times past. Yeah, and Jesse, I want to pray for Archbishop Vigano's health because we need him in the church right now. We need a voice like a shepherd, like we never have known one before in our lifetime. Jess, this to me is really a time for Catholics to not be afraid and to step up and pray and, and evangelize and, and get out there and get your rosaries out and make your visits to the Blessed Sacrament. Get the Mass as often as possible. Pray for the, our, the Holy Father. Pray for the leaders in our church that they'll have the courage to stand up to the evil one. Because you know what, Jess? The evil one is alive and well in our culture, and we need to stomp them out with our love for our Blessed Mother and the love for the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That's my take, brother. Yeah, I'm with you, Terry. From your lips to God's ears, uh, that God may protect this archbishop. Yep. And all the other ones that are speaking the truth, the power, the truth, and charity. Hey, ta- Jesse, yeah. talking about a bishop, I forgot. Guess who's coming on after us? Bishop another, another straight Joseph Strickland. Bishop. Hey, you got to hear him here at Virgin. We've got the best bishop in America right now. Who's a- Also, Terry, let's uh, have the audience pray for Father James Altman. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's another priest that's got apostolic up, deal. And yeah. Say, a pray, say your 12 noon Angelus for yep. him today yep. that God protects his holy priest from his enemies. Yeah, and Jesse, let's remind people real quickly those five stones, the rosary, read scripture, make visits, get the confession. Uh, and, uh, and, and sacrifice, penance, 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 penance. penance, penance. That's, what, yep. that's what can convert people, fasting, right? Yes, that's right. what I've read in the Bible, fasting Absolutely. and prayers. Hey, listen, uh, Jess, what state should we be living in, brother? Not in the state of mortal sin, not in the state of depression, in the state of hope, and in the state of, in the state of grace. And remember, when it's all said and done, make sure that before you see Jesus Christ, you leave it all out in the field before you die. Remember, Bishop Strickland, Joseph Strickland from Tyler's coming up next on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Like us on Facebook. We're getting thousands of new listeners because of you promoting this program. Because you know what? It's the truth that sets us free. May God richly bless you and your family and full sheen ahead at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests Oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, Grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, 
give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.